Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to make a two-layered ball dress for a little girl. Hi, my name is Ayo and welcome to 011 Clothing Tutorials. On this channel, I upload DIYs, pattern drafting and sewing tutorials. If you haven't subscribed yet, kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. So now, let's get right into the tutorial. Thank you. I'll be working with the following items. Taylor's chalk. Tape measure. Matching thread. A pair of scissors. Hard net. A matching zipper, two years of lining fabric, three years of two nets, three years of bridal satin. A yard of lace fabric, basic bodice pattern for a child, which I drafted in a previous tutorial. So I have here the front and back basic bodice pattern, which I drafted in a previous tutorial. Its link will be above and in the description box below. I will cut the pattern pieces on this lace fabric. I will also cut it on the bridal satin and also on the lining fabric as well. I've already pinned the front and back patterns on the lace fabric. I use half an inch seam allowances all through, except for the side seam where I use one inch side seam allowance. Only the front pattern will be cut on fold. I will go ahead and cut out the front and back patterns. I will also cut the pattern pieces on the bridal satin. Also, I will cut out the back and front pattern pieces on the lining fabric as well. I will now cut out the belt. I will fold the bridal satin into four layers like this. I will draw a horizontal line at this lower end. I will now go ahead and measure out the length of the belt, which is 27 inches. I will square the line across like this. I will measure and mark 2.5 inches for the width of the upper part of the belt. From this lower line, from this lower line, I will measure and mark 3 inches upwards. I will measure and mark three and a half inches for the width of the lower part of the belt. I will connect these two points together like this. I 
I will also connect these two points together like this with my long ruler. I will now go ahead and cut out the bed pieces. So these are the pieces that I need to make the upper part of the dress. I will now move over to the lower part. The first thing I need to do is to cut out a full circle flare on the bridal satin. To do this, I need to know the waist circumference. The waist circumference for this dress is 21 inches. But I added 2 inches at the center back for the zip allowance, 1 inch on both sides of the center back. So the total weight circumference plus the zip allowance is 23 inches. To get the radius, I will divide 23 by 6.28 and this gave me 3.7 inches. The length of the flare, the length I want for the flare is 14 inches. So this is the bridal satin. I will fold the bridal satin into four. First, I will fold it into two, like this. Then I will fold again, like this, to form a shape that looks like a square. So I now have four layers of fabric. The radius I estimated earlier is 3.7 inches. So from this corner, I will measure and mark 3.7 inches. I will measure it all around to form a curve. I will now go ahead and measure out the length of the flare, which is 14 inches. It was 1 inch for seam allowance, making it 15 inches. I will also measure all around to form a curve. I will now go ahead and cut it out. Now I will cut the half circle flare on the lining fabric. The length of the flare is 14 inches just like that of the bridal satin. The waist measurement plus zip allowance is 23 inches. To estimate the radius this time around, I will divide 23 inches by 3.14. This is because I intend to cut a half circle flare and this is equal to 7.32 inches.
So I will fold the lining fabric into two like this. Then I will fold again like this to form a triangle so that we now have four layers of fabric. From this top corner, I will measure and mark 7.32 inches, which is the radius that I calculated earlier. I will also measure the length plus one inch seam allowance, which is 15 inches. I will now cut it out. The total length I want for the dress is 27 inches. The shoulder to waist measurement, which is the length of the upper bodies of the dress, is 9 inches. So now the length of the lower part of the dress will be 27 inches minus 9 inches, which is 18 inches. There will be bridal satin at the end of the two Two, at the end of at the end of the two nets, and this will be four inches long. The first layer of two will be fourteen inches long. I will subtract four inches for the bridal satin at the end of the two from this, and this is fourteen minus four, which gave me ten inches. I will add one inch seam allowance to the 10 inches and this may this gave me 11 inches. The second layer of two nets will be 18 inches long. I subtract four inches for the brighter satin at the end of the two, which is equal to 18 minus 4 inches which is equal to 14 inches. I will add additional 1 inch for the same allowance and this makes it 15 inches long. So now I've laid out the two nets on the table as you can see. The two nets is on fold. I will cut out three pieces of two nets that are all 11 inches long. This will be the first layer of two gathers. So I'll be joining these three pieces together to form a single piece, which I will gather to form the first layer of two on the dress. After cutting this one, I will go ahead and cut another three pieces of two nails that are all 15 inches long. So now I've gone ahead to cut out another three pieces of two nails that are all 15 inches long. So these are the pieces that will be used to make the, the ball dress. I've also gone ahead to cut out long strips of bridal satin that I will be sewing to the end of the two nails. They are all five inches wide. I added one inch for the same allowance. The length of the strips, after joining them together, should be the same length as the three pieces of two nets after joining them together also. So now I'm done cutting all the pieces of fabric needed to make the dress. This is the front bodice pattern, which I cut on fold. I cut it on fold on the on the net, on the on the lace fabric, on the bridal satin, and also on the lining fabric as well. I interface I interface the neckline of the lining fabric on the wrong side. 
So this is the interfacing on the neckline of the lining fabric. This is the back bodice. I cut two pieces of it. I cut a piece of it on the lace fabric. On the bridal satin. And also on the lining fabric as well. I also interface the necklines of the lining pieces on the wrong side of the fabric. These two pieces are for the belt of the dress. This is the full sacoufle, which I cut on the bridal satin. This is the half sacoufle, which I cut on the lining fabric. I have here three pieces of two nets, which are all 15 inches long. I will join the three pieces together and I will gather it to form a layer of two nets for the dress. I also have here three pieces of two nets, which are all 11 inches long. I will join the pieces together and I will gather it to form another layer of two for the dress. I have here these long strips of bridal satin, which are five inches wide. They will be joined together and stick to the end of the tool. These pieces are the bodies of the dress. I have already placed the lace fabric on top of, of the bridal satin. The wrong side of the lace is on top of the right side of the bridal satin. I will now go ahead and stitch the pieces together all around using one quarter inch seam allowance. So now that has been done, I've stitched the lace and the bridal satin pieces together. I will now place the lining pieces on top of the lace pieces like this, right side to right side. What I intend to do now is to stitch all around the necklines of both the front and the back pieces using half an inch sewing allowance. But first I will pin the pieces in place before taking it to my sewing machine to stitch. So now that has been done as you can see. After sewing the neckline, I knock the same allowances at the neckline. I now understick the same allowance to the neckline of the lining fabric. I did this so that the neckline won't peek out of the, of the dress after we are, we are done sewing the dress. I did this for both the front and the back pieces. Now I will place the back pieces on top of the front piece like this, right side to right side. What I intend to do is to join the shoulders together. So I will open up the shoulder like this. I will be joining fabric to fabric and lining to lining. I will make sure that the center points the shoulder lines align. I will pin in place. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance.
So now that has been done, as you can see, I've joined the shoulder lines together for both the back and the front pattern, for both the back and the front pieces. I will now move over to the belt. I've gone ahead to cut out the bed pieces on the lace fabric as well. This is an afterthought. I decided to do this at the last minute. So I'll place the lace fabric on top of the bridal satin like this. Wrong side of the lace is on top of the right side of the bridal satin. I will go ahead and stitch all around using one quarter inch seam allowance after which I will trim off the excess lace fabric. So I will go ahead and do that now. So now that has been done as you can see, I will fold the bed pieces into two like this, right side to right side. I will now stitch. I will stitch like this using half an inch sewing allowance. So now that has been done, as you can see, and I have turned the bed pieces to the right side. I will now go ahead and place the bed piece, pieces on top of the front bodies like this, three quarter of an inch above the waistline. I will paint in place like this. Note that the side of the bed that is unfold is facing up while the side with the same line is facing down. I will pin the bed in place, after which I will go ahead and stitch it in place using one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. Now I'll fix the beds to the front bodies. It's now time to join the front and the back side seams together. I'll go ahead and do that now. I will be sewing the exterior fabric and the, ex the exterior fabric of the front and the exterior fabric of the back together using one inch sewing allowance. But first, I will pin in place. I will also be sewing the lining fabric of the front and the lining fabric of the back together using one inch sewing allowance. So now that has been done, as you can see, the lining piece is separate from the exterior fabric, that is the main fabric. The two pieces are separate as you can see. These are the two pieces. These three pieces are 11, are the 11 inches, are the 11 inch pieces. I will join the three pieces together along the short ends to give me one long strip. I will pin in place before taking it to my sewing machine and stitching in place. After stitching in place, I will, I will trim half an inch seam allowance to about one quarter of an inch. I will do the same thing for the 15 inch pieces as well. I will also go ahead and join these long strips of bridal satin together until I get a length that is equal to the length of the two net pieces. I will also be joining the pieces together at the short, at the, at the short ends. So now that has been done, I've joined the bridal satin pieces together, as you can see, and I have two long strips of bridal satin pieces, which I'll be fixing to the end of the tool.
So what I intend to do now is to overlock one side of these bridal satin pieces and then aim it by folding it once to the wrong side of the fabric. So now that has been done, I have aimed one side of the bridal satin pieces and I have given it a thorough press after aiming. I will now go ahead and stitch the side that I did not aim to the two net pieces. So now that has been done, I've fixed the bridal satin pieces to the two nets and I've also gathered the upper parts of the two nets. After joining the bridal satin to the two nets, I made sure I overlock the raw edges. Then I flip the, the seam allowance towards the bridal satin. I now went ahead to top stitch, making sure that the seam allowances are pushed towards the bridal satin and not the two net because the two net is transparent and we do not want the seam allowance to be visible to be visible underneath the two net. This is the full circle flare that I cut on the bridal satin. I've already overlocked the aim. I drew one inch margin at this side. For the, this is for the zip allowance. So I will open up the flare like this with the right side facing up. Then I will place the longer two nets on top of it like this with the right side of the two nets facing up. I will also place the shorter two piece on top like this with the right side also facing up. I will now pin the three pieces together like this at the waistline. I will make sure that the two net pieces do not reach the one inch margin which I marked out for the zip allowance at the center back of the dress. I will now take it to my sewing machine and stick the three pieces together using about one quarter of an inch sewing allowance. So now that has been done. As you can see, I'll stick the three pieces together. I left the one inch zip allowance free of the two nets. And I also make sure I folded in the two nets at both ends of the center back so as to avoid the raw edges showing. I'll be stitching this net, this add net, on the lining, on the lining. It is about 9 inches wide. And the length is the full length of the add net, which is about 16 inches long. I ended up using just one piece of this. So this is the lining piece and I've already overlocked the M. You should overlock yours too. I 
I will place the net and I will stitch it to the wrong side of the lining, two inches away from the uh, from the upper part of the of the flare, or two, two inches away from the waistline. So now that has been done, as you can see. I sewed it like this using half an inch sewing allowance. I now flipped it over so as to hide the royal edges. I also avoided the zip allowance when sewing the net to the lining. I will now bring out the bodies of the dress. I will place the two skirts on top of the bodies like this, right side to right side. I will pin them together at the waistline and I will stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. I will also place the skirt lining on top of the bodice lining like this. Right sides will be together. I will pin the pieces in place. I will pin the pieces together. Then I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch using half an inch sewing allowance. So I will go ahead and do that now. So now that has been done, as you can see, I've joined the bodies to the skirt for both the main fabric and the lining piece. It is now time to fix the zip to the center back of the dress. I've already marked the one inch uh, zip allowance as you can see. I want the zip to end here. So I will stitch from this point down to the end of the, of the skirt. So now that has been done, I've already marked the one inch zip allowance on both sides of the center back. I also left one inch opening here at the neckline. I also left one inch at the neckline at the center back. I left one inch opening. I will now go ahead and fix the zip. I'm making use of the zipper foot. So now I'll go ahead and fix the zip to the one inch zip allowance line which I already drew on the fabric, which I already marked out on the fabric. So now I'm done with fixing the zip. I 
I will now turn the dress to the wrong side. What I intend to do now is to stitch the lining at the center back in place. To do this, I will flip over the lining like this. Then I will sew this opening, this one inch opening I left at the neckline. I will sew it first, like this, on both sides, on both sides of the center back. After which, I will now stitch the lining to the center back of the dress on the same stitch line or very close to the stitch line I use for, fix for fixing the zip. So now I will go ahead and do that now. First, I will close this opening at the, at the, at the, at the neckline, at the center back neckline. I will now go ahead and stick the lining to the center back of the dress very close to the previous stitch line it is very close to the teeth to the teeth of the zipper but be very careful not to sew on the zipper teeth also I'm making use of the zipper foot So now that has been done, as you can see, it's now time to fix these sleeves. I cut the sleeve on the lace fabric. I cut two pieces on the bridal satin and two pieces on the lining fabric as well. I will now go ahead and fix the zip the sleeves to the armhole of the dress. So now that has been done, as you can see, I've fixed the sleeves to the armhole and I've given the dress a thorough press. You have to be careful when ironing the dress so as to avoid burning the two nets. So that's it guys, we are done. Do not forget to like, share, drop a comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thanks so much for watching.